Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video I wanted to actually answer one of the questions that one of you has been asking about how to find the black hole in the middle of Andromeda Galaxy. But to be honest, I actually want to talk a little bit more about the galaxy itself. And so this video is going to be all about the Andromeda. We're going to talk about the history, the facts, and some of the more interesting information about this beautiful, very large galaxy somewhat far away from us. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And every good adventure starts on our planet Earth, so we're going to start from here. And let's actually talk about what Andromeda used to be known as. So, as a matter of fact, if I look into the sky right there, I will see that you can kind of see the Andromeda. As a matter of fact, this is one of the few objects you can easily see with a naked eye um, in a dark enough location uh, without using any binoculars, without using anything really. And to be honest, this is actually the farthest object you can see with your naked eyes. So if you were to look in the night sky, this right here is the only object you can see without a telescope that's about 2.5 million light years away. Ridiculously far. And let's actually try zooming in here using the telescopic function in the game, just to see what it would look like if you were to use binoculars or a telescope to look at this. And so this is essentially what the scientists back in early 19th and 20th century saw um, when they looked at Andromeda. And it used to be known as Andromeda Nebula. So they actually thought that this is just another nebula uh, or possibly um, a star that's being formed with planetary objects uh, orbiting around it uh, that was part of our Milky Way galaxy. This actually was a common knowledge until about 1923. This is when things really changed. A person by the name of Hubble, who has a telescope named after him, discovered that one of the stars in this beautiful galaxy was something known as a Cepheid variable. I've actually talked about this concept previously, and you can check out the video um, on the channel, uh, but let's actually just talk about uh, what this meant uh, for Hubble. Discovering a Cepheid variable in Andromeda meant that he could now look at it and try to estimate its distance because Cepheid variables allow you to basically use the star um, variability period or basically changes in luminosity um, in comparison to the actual luminosity that you see to try to estimate the actual distance to the subject. And what he's discovered was mind-blowing. He discovered that this distance was in millions of light years. This was actually the first time they discovered an object that was so far away. And anyway, so let's actually go to Andromeda Galaxy and let's uh, take a look at it and try to find that um, elusive supermassive black hole at its center. So we're going to accelerate toward it at uh, several thousand light years per second. And we're going to go outside of our own galaxy and basically visit the Andromeda. So some of the more interesting things about it is that, first of all, this galaxy is about twice um, as massive as the Milky Way. Its total mass um, and its number of stars is at least twice as big. So there's about a trillion stars in the, in the Andromeda with only about 400 billion stars in the Milky Way. Um, it's also about twice as big, it's about 225,000 light years across. But in every other sense, as you'll see in a second, it's actually very similar to the Milky Way. As a matter of fact, it looks almost identical. So it, uh, it's a spiral galaxy and it's a barred spiral galaxy, meaning that it has a bar going through the middle of it, which you'll see in a second as soon as I come close enough to it. And we're going to turn our view around a little bit just so you can see the bar that's somewhere right here-ish. I think it's somewhere right here. It's kind of hard to see it here. Uh, it's a little bit more visible on our own Milky Way. Uh, and interestingly, just like the Milky Way, um, this galaxy has companion galaxies around it. So there's actually two that are right here. This one is known as M10 and this one here is known as M32. 
And these two galaxies actually experienced a bit of a bullying from the Andromeda because um, billions of years ago, when they, when they came close enough, it took a bite out of them. It took a huge chunk out of them and combined it into itself. And because of this, this galaxy doesn't really have very straight spiral arms. Its spiral arms are kind of wiggly because these two galaxies actually disturbed uh, Andromeda galaxy when they were close enough to it. But there are actually 24 uh, companion galaxies around uh, the Andromeda, and you can kind of see some of them uh, orbiting around their, their smaller companions. Uh, our own Milky Way has about 16, uh, whereas this one has 25. And there's actually um, another large galaxy in the vicinity known as the Triangulum Galaxy, and all three Triangulum, uh, Milky Way, and Andromeda form what's known as the local cluster. In total, there's actually about uh, 54 galaxies in our local galactic cluster, and uh, there's the Triangulum right there, but we're going to be mostly focusing on Andromeda. And let's actually go into the center and try to look for that supermassive black hole. I may actually have to disable some of the um, magnitude here, mostly because it's a little bit too bright. So uh, let's uh, let's go and look for um, some kind of a cluster of stars, maybe right here, and try to see if this might contain the supermassive black hole in uh, in the middle of this galaxy. Now. The interesting thing about the um, center or, or the central region of this galaxy is that it doesn't just have one uh, very bright core, but it seems to contain two. And uh, after years of study, the scientists discovered that, uh, well, the one of those cores, one of those very bright objects, is the supermassive black hole that's about 25 times more massive than the supermassive black hole in the center of our own galaxy, known as Sagittarius A star. So this one here is about 100 million masses of the sun, and I'm going to try to look for it uh, by doing the following. We're actually going to um, maybe cheat a little bit. We're going to select Andromeda, and basically look at this arrow right here and go toward the direction where it's pointing. So it says it's this way. I think it's possibly in this globular cluster right there in front of us. It's gotta be inside of that thing. Um, so, we're going to go and find that 100 million masses of sun supermassive black hole that doesn't actually have a name. It's just known as the Andromeda supermassive black hole. And one day, this is actually all going to be become part of our own galaxy as well, because you may have watched the video where I talk about the collision between the Andromeda and the Milky Way. In about 4.5 billion years, the Andromeda galaxy is actually going to collide uh, with our own Milky Way and combine into it, creating a very, very large elliptical galaxy that we might actually refer to as the Milkdromeda, because they're going to become part of one. And it's going to become the most massive, the largest possible galaxy in our local cluster. All right, so the arrow is telling me that it's right here, and I think it's this bright, super bright object right in the middle. So just to check, we're going to um, accelerate time. And if we see stars orbiting around this super bright object right there, that's got to be the supermassive black hole. So let's go closer to it. And let's check it out. And maybe take a look at uh, the stars as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, the Andromeda galaxy is actually moving toward our own Milky Way at a speed of about 140 kilometers per second. And obviously it's going to accelerate when, it's come, when it comes closer. But at, right now it's moving toward us very, 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 very fast. And so, uh, just as I mentioned before, this particular central region has two very bright nuclei. So, this is the first one. This is the actual uh, black hole known as M31 Central Black Hole because M31 is the other name for the Andromeda Galaxy. And um, I think, I'm not sure if this is actually correct. I don't think this is a correct mass here uh, because it's technically 100 million masses of um, our own sun. Uh, but the actual central region has two of these very interesting uh, bright uh, regions. So one of them, one core is right here. And in reality, there is actually another core somewhere right here formed by all of these thousands of stars orbiting around the black hole. And as they orbit around the black hole, some of the stars um, remain here in the uh, apogee or the farthest distance of the black hole and create this very, very bright object. So if you actually look at this with a telescope, what it looks like, um, is a very bright object here and a very bright region here. So this is why Andromeda is known as a dual nucleus galaxy. It has two very bright nuclei in the middle. 
And so let's actually go a little bit closer to the super massive black hole in the middle of Andromeda. Slow down time a little bit just so it looks a little bit nicer. And maybe just go on the inside as well. We're going to go inside of it and make the Andromeda galaxy and the entire universe disappear behind us. And so here we go. Boom. It's all gone. Anyway, so that's really all I wanted to say in this video. I just wanted to teach you a little bit about the Andromeda Galaxy, about its properties, about its history, and the importance of, uh, of the discovery of this um, really beautiful Cepheid variable star known as V1 um, in the Andromeda Galaxy that basically changed the understanding of the universe. Before uh, Edwin Hubble discovered V1, we thought that uh, everything... All of the stars in our um, night sky are basically part of the Milky Way. But he realized and he discovered and he showed that that was not true, that there were other galaxies out there and that the universe was actually a very, very large place. And I guess before we finish this video, let's actually return back home and take a look at all of this uh, as it looks from Earth, just to uh, remind ourselves how far away this actually is, how, how much of a distance we actually had to travel to get here. And of course, remind us of the fact that not only is this actually far, but the light that we see coming from the Andromeda galaxy is actually 2.5 million years old. So everything that we see today is basically the history of Andromeda that basically started way, way before humanity even existed. So this is actually how impressive all of this is. And let's zoom in onto the central region here and maybe see if we can discover that globular cluster that we just came from where we saw the supermassive black hole and I think maybe it's this one right here with the bright region in the middle being the supermassive black hole so this is magnification of like thousands and millions of time uh, from earth using the telescope available to us in space engine and anyway, thank you so much for watching and hopefully you learned something from this video and hopefully now you appreciate the Andromeda Galaxy and Hubble's discovery a little bit more. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to come back tomorrow and possibly share this video with your friends who would like to learn something else using video games. And anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. And as always, space out. See you later and bye-bye.